Today, we're talking about the future of SMS and customer experience. I'm joined by Blake from Attentive. Blake, welcome and how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me, Chase. Uh, big fan of the podcast and your work, so it's great to finally get to, uh, to do one of these together. Yeah, dude, I'm pumped. I'm super excited to learn from you. Let's get started. Do you want to really quickly talk about, you know, I guess what you're working on and then the floor is yours to present? Sure. Yeah. So um, my name is Blake and Pearl. I run our partner community at Attentive. Um, my background really is in D2C e-com. Um, I spent a lot of time on the agency side, working with D2C brands, doing email and SMS marketing. Um, but most recently, I led growth in a company called Tone, a conversational SMS company. Um, we were acquired by Attentive in June of this year. So um, quickly transitioned over the Attentive team and I've been building out this partner community across our agency and ecosystem partnerships. So really exciting stuff, really excited to be here and really be working on the future of SMS, which is something I'm really passionate about. Sweet. And I know you have a lot of actual experience kind of in the weeds of actually implementing SMS. So excited to get your kind of opinion and take and approach. So the floor is yours. Let's do this. Awesome. Let's do it. Um, so as Chase mentioned, I'm talking to you guys today about the future of SMS and customer experience and really where things I think are headed. Um, you know, SMS has evolved so rapidly as a channel. And I think, you know, now as marketers and brands, we're really looking for what's next in a lot of ways. Um, so the two main takeaways I want you to walk away with from this discussion today is really how to think about conversational SMS and how that's redefining customer experience. And then additionally, you know, how should we think about approaching relationship building at scale with our customers over an own channel like SMS? Um, so want to quickly just set the landscape, I think, for where we're at in this SMS space. For those of you who might not be as well versed in SMS, um, you know, really, we're at this point now where countless brands are diving in headfirst to SMS and they're funneling a lot of their own traffic through SMS, um, you know, to really prioritize a lot of data collection. And those of you in the audience probably are either running an SMS program today or considering it. And so with that being said, it might likely be your, one of your top performance marketing channels as we're seeing across, you know, our over 4,000 merchants here at Attentive. Um, and besides this massive explosion of, you know, mobile commerce, like one trend I really like to point out, which has caused a lot of, you know, sort of um, investment in SMS is this recent data and privacy changes that have happened over the last year. You know, I don't think I don't need to go into it, but, you know, iOS 14.5, 15, the impending cookie apocalypse, all of these things, it's getting harder to reach consumers. And we're really looking at, you know, zero and first party data for the answer. And for those of you who don't know, you know, zero party data is something some, a customer would actively share and first party data being something like a behavioral interaction. Um, and these are like kind of buzzwords I think you'll see thrown around in the D2C community, but really for good reason, as these are kind of the building blocks, which we think about acquisition, retention, and then overall building a customer experience that goes across that life cycle. And this is really where SMS can come in and really be a powerhouse for you and your strategy because it's built on first and zero party data to create those personalized experiences. And I think too, what we've seen, you know, on the attentive side, but also just anecdotally is that consumers are wanting more out of SMS as a channel. Now it's no longer just that promotional marketing channel. You know, they're wanting things like transactional SMS, two-way communication and customer service, which I'm gonna talk primarily about today. And then additionally, you just additional use cases to really create a more holistic journey. Um, you know, and we know that customer experience matters in building a disruptive D2C brand. And again, I mentioned it's not a promotional sales, cha sales channel anymore with SMS. Um, and we're really looking at like, how can we drive better experiences over SMS through leveraging data? You know, SMS being this conversational channel, conversations are such a great way to obtain data on your customers. And so we're really looking to find ways to make this more natural and organic. And so this begs the question really like all these data and privacy changes, you know, emphasis on data, acquisition, retention, all these things shifting. And even this idea that like, there might one day be a race to own the SMS inbox uh, as more brands step into this. So how do we think about standing out with our channel? Um, and how do we build relationships at scale through better customer experiences? And really, I think a large answer to this is conversational SMS. You know, adding this to your existing program helps you to create a more holistic experience and really like helping you to own that inbox and build that day one relationship. Uh, so all this to say, I've set this up, but you know, what is conversational SMS? It's, it's really as simple as it sounds, it's just a conversation between you and your customer. Um, you know, and as we've shifted into this online shopping experience, 
you're kind of losing out on the in-store experience that you would go and talk to the shoe salesman and maybe have that conversation and you're, they're obtaining data on you and like really making a personalized recommendation. And so we know that SMS is this conversational channel and a lot of brands are understanding that they can start to leverage relationship, you know, building through conversations and do this at scale now. Um, it's also, again, that really valuable way to obtain data on your customers to make smarter marketing decisions, which is, you know, very important too when you think about touch points and kind of those key touch points across that journey. So Chase, I actually want to ask you a question. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say some of this data backs up conversational SMS mattering. Uh, but in your, in your opinion, what percentage of the time do consumers respond to texts that are sent by a brand that ask for a response? Uh, is it 10%, 23, 42, 53, or 64%? I'm going to guess 42, but I could be wrong. And you would be right on the money. Yep, it's 42% of the time. Um, and what makes us even better about this is that we find when you start getting folks texting back and forth, they spend about 31% more on average across our data, and they're more likely to come back and buy again. So when you start having conversations, not only are we meeting an opportunity to deliver a better experience, but we're also increasing our revenue and ultimately that customer lifetime value. So it's really a win-win for both you and the brand. All this to say, there are three pillars that I like to think about with building a surprise and delight moment via conversational SMS. That's your two-way journeys, your customer service integrations, and then attentive concierge. So gonna go first into two-way journeys. Uh, these can be utilized across any automated journey within the attentive platform. And they're really a powerful way for you to be able to communicate with your customers through a personalized messaging path. You know, as a result, you're gaining a deeper understanding of their own preferences, but you're also making better informed strategies in your segmentation um, and just message delivery. They basically what these do is they prompt your customers to engage with your brand and uncover a unique subscriber preference. Um, and then, again, attributing to that better experience, as you can see too by this slide, uh, the results have really spe been speaking for themselves from the beta that we just ran. We just GA two way journeys, but we're seeing about an average of 17 percent click through rate and about $4.64 per every message sent. And coming back to this idea of zero party data and how it lends to better experiences, these are really great for collecting that data um, to build better segments, to drive deeper engagement, and then just making those smarter decisions. Um, you know, For example, knowing you have a segment of subscribers who told you that their primary interest is skincare products or oily skin, now thinking about like I have a segment of folks I'm going to send this campaign to, it really can just help to make that messaging a lot more targeted and a lot more direct. Um, so where can we use these? You know, again, I mentioned you can use them across any automated journey, but some things that we love to point out, you know, um, you know, handling buyer objections, maybe onboarding quizzes, maybe post purchase, delivering a better onboarding experience, uh, gamifying a shopping experience, cross selling complimentary products educating customers, taking them down a journey, and just a lot more use cases. But the powerful thing about these is they keep the experience conversational rather than one-sided while you're collecting data that you're really starting to use and then kind of make a more informed strategy. So that customer is getting more of what they want, but in turn, you're able to actually start to build out this customer profile in a very natural uh, way. So this is a great example. I love to point out, um, you know, thinking about the holidays right around the corner. Um, it's a great strategy for in the moment personalization, but also downstream retargeting. So this brand is basically leveraging two way journeys immediately after someone signs up for the SMS program. And so we know people purchase gifts for a variety of folks in their life. And so what they're doing is they're asking, who are you shopping for today? And based on that response, they have tailored gift guides that they send. Um, and so what they're doing is able to attach this profile property to that response. And then maybe downstream as they retarget the shopper, maybe if they said they're shopping for themselves, maybe the campaign messaging throughout the holidays is all about treating yourself and, and all these themes that start to kind of come up and, and it really just starts to show that you're listening as a brand. This is another example of a customer that we work with called Elemis, and they wanted to make a way that mobile shopping could be both interactive and personalized. And so their marketing team hypothesized that they could re-engage and nudge high intent customers towards a purchase by really making a personalized recommendation via a two-way journey. And so what they did is they actually A-B tested <clears throat> where they said half of their subscribers who enter their browse abandonment flow, a tailored recommendation based on those shopping interests. And so the message was geared towards letting them tell them exactly what they were interested in. And then based on that response, they're making an expert approved recommendation. 
uh, they saw about a 6x increase in click-through rate and about a 2x, 2x increase in conversions compared to a standard one-way browse abandonment message while taking this approach. So not only were these two-way journeys integral in, in lifting performance on browse abandonment, but also really setting up powerful data that they use downstream with these customer profiles as they thought about remarketing. I'm going to move on down to um, the next pillar of this. Now we've talked about kind of like keyword automations and two-way journeys and thinking about customer support and how we can create more surprise and delight moments across the journey. So we ran a poll of our customers and we found that over 94% of consumers are open to receiving customer support over SMS. This is a large opportunity for brands to really tap into something that they're already engaging with you on. And setting this up is really, really simple. You know, you can do this by just connecting your SMS program with Attentive or whoever you're using to a platform like Gorgeous. Um, and then with all the messages you're getting sent out, you know, you really want to think about building that relationship and starting it off on the right foot by managing what I like to call a day one expectation. So what I really recommend is when someone opts in at your very highest touch point, let them know that this is a conversational channel. You know, adding a simple, hey, text us if you have any questions can go a long way in just creating a better experience from the start and starting that relationship off by thinking about, you know, two-way communication. And again, you know, by handling the customer service over text, you're offering them somewhere that they're already engaging with you on. And they get to have conversations that live in their pocket and they can just continue on their day and really text back and forth at their own pace. Um, and it's really good for making them build trust and then making it easier for them to take action with things like if you're trying to maybe incentivize a purchase. You know, as I mentioned too, conversations can drive revenue. Um, and so I'm a firm believer that you don't have to think about customer service like a cost center. And this integration really opens up opportunities for you to think about additional revenue generating in addition to this traditional customer service offering. Um, so this is the type of things that really start to build brand equity um, on that SMS channel. We had a customer, a shared customer of Attentive and Gorgeous called Ren and Glory who integrated both of these and they did this because they sell products that are handmade to order and have lengthier purchase cycles. And so their agency partner actually hypothesized that they need to be engaging more at the top of the funnel with customer service. And so now whenever someone has a question, they're automatically able to forward that text to the customer support team. Um, and then being able to reference past historical data through that integration, they're able to add context and personalize that message. It, by doing this, they saw fantastic results, about a 230% increase in on-site purchase volume year over year, and the conversion rates going up by about 32% over that same time. The thing to note with this is really a customer service over SMS that can deliver a good experience, can drive revenue at the same time. Um, so now that I've talked about really kind of building relationships in this two-way journeys um, in customer service, I really want to show you where I think the future of SMS and customer experience are headed. It's like something that I'm extremely bullish on. Um, you know, and as we've seen, customer service can often be that missing link between consideration and purchasing. You know, what we found uh, over analyzing, you know, the, the countless messages that we've sent out is that customers respond with sometimes buying questions or often buying questions, but they're just not being responded to in time. This is a lot of revenue, a lot of relationship building left on the table. And while it can be challenging to respond quickly and effectively, when they do it, you know, they do drive more sales, they drive happier, more engaged customers, um, and ultimately just building that better experience like we saw in the Red and Glory case study. So what Attentive did to, to solve this problem is we actually acquired a company called Tone, which I came from um, in June of this year, to provide human powered responses to SMS questions. Um, so we combined the two platforms and built a really cool service called Attentive Concierge. Um, and this is in beta right now, but I'm happy to share some stats and kind of where this is headed. Um, and it provides a team of live agents uh, employed by a tenant who are able to actually initiate conversations with your shoppers in real time. And what we've found is that people are responding at a high rate to those messages and they're converting a lot higher than one way marketing messages. We're seeing about an 18% increase in click through rates and ROI on these messages of about 10 X or higher. And these conversations are really enabling you to build personal relationships with your customers at scale that can drive better loyalty and, and really help along those key touch points in that buyer journey. It's also really exciting because we're really early on in this process. And I think as we integrate it across the attendant platform, we're really looking at more of a holistic um, approach to customer service across all of our messages. 
Um, we're also seeing a significant reduction in customer service tickets. So as you think about adding value from that perspective, it lets your CS team focus on more of like what's important while you can really focus those in geared buying questions toward concierge. Um, you know, the use cases are really endless for this, as I mentioned, but some things that you could think about using a product like concierge for is really creating first time customers by crushing buying objections, you know, driving repeat business by building relationships through conversations, and then also just generally that customer support by doing it fast and at scale, like that's often a missing piece between a, a good experience and just an okay experience. Um, so what does this look like? You know, really a great example is Super 73. They're an electric motorbike brand who used concierge to intervene with at-risk sales. Cart abandonment, as we all know, is a huge problem for e-commerce. You know, anywhere between 68 to 85 percent, maybe even more, can be cart abandoners. And one of the biggest reasons is buying objections. And so because a lot of brands sell maybe higher ticket items, sometimes additional questions need to be answered that really encourage taking that leap. And so Super 73 used concierge to handle buying objections and close more sales. Um, you know, what they did is, you know, in this example, the customer is asking a question about the battery pack um, and, and basically by this concierge agent, you know, answering their question in real time, it encouraged that customer to make the purchase and feel confident in that. Um, so if this wasn't answered, who knows, maybe that would have been a lost conversion. Maybe they never engage again with the brand. You know, I'll leave it up to you to, to infer, but it really shows that these conversations can drive sales. Um, all this to say, I've kind of talked through some three kind of core pillars, but I really want to kind of wrap this up with what gets me excited and where I think this is going to continue to head. And that's how do we create a messaging environment that looks and feels like a real human, but cater it to different messaging types and use cases. You know, these are things that we're actively thinking about at here, at here at Attentive. And we know that connectivity between a tech stack is so important in an omni-channel strategy. SMS is not the siloed channel anymore. Um, and so really how can we think about taking various integrations with like automations on SMS and pair that with real time customer support to really create a best in class experience across every message type. Um, and so, you know, think about continuous relationship nurturing across touch points that's done in real time and it's helpful above all else. And so this is a fantastic example of what connectivity could look like. Um, we just released the Nokendo integration last month where customers are already seeing great success on. You know, Kendo, for those of you who don't know, is a um, reviews platform who allows you to create or to generate, um, you know, user generated content through things like ratings, reviews, photos, videos, etc. cetera. Um, and now we're excited because customers are using SMS to generate more reviews in UGC, um, which is so critical, we know, for, for brands for many reasons. Um, and so we have this customer that we share called Groove Life, and they're already seeing a lot of success with Okendo, which is awesome to see as we continue to roll this out. And, you know, while we hope that everybody can have a success story like Groove Life with generating reviews, sometimes we know that you might get a negative review, no matter how hard you try as a D2C brand. Um, and so what we're thinking is, you know, let's say an automated, you know, someone uh, gets that automated review request and maybe they leave a negative review. So instead of letting that customer sit on those negative thoughts, maybe for hours, days, maybe even weeks, depending on how you're handling this, Imagine the next thing that happens is that a concierge agent reaches out to you and figures out like what happened. You know, why was that a negative review? What can we do to make it better? Um, not only could you grab value with feedback, but you'd also be able to leverage all of these conversational data points that you might have already had with a customer to really infer what they're going to do next. You can take that zero party data, that first party data and really try to just one remedy the situation, but maybe even save that at risk customer. You know, as you can see, this level of holistic connectivity really bridges a gap between automation and customer service and uses data to tastefully make a better customer experience that's fast, proactive and helpful, really, above all else. And just imagining how a customer would feel with that level of support and outreach. I mean, being able to do this at scale across your brands is really just a massive value add to SMS as a whole. And this really demonstrates, I think, the connectivity that we're going to see you know, across SMS and customer experience, um, you know, and just kind of to sum all this up, I, I just want to leave you, you know, remember, this is a conversational channel by nature. This is how SMS started, you know, 30 years ago. And so looking to add moments to make conversations more organic in your marketing is so critical. I think as we look into this 2020s, you know, and, and standing out conversations, build that relationship and trust and ultimately, you know, just help create better customer experiences, which is what DTC brands are all about. 
Um, and again, this race to own the inbox, you know, think about ways to use conversational to your benefit to really stand out. Um, yeah, that, that's all. That's all I got to say, Chase. Um, Sweet, man. This was, this was awesome. I know I'm going to send this to my team to kind of watch us back. Got a bunch of cool ideas that came from this. So thank you. Um, where can people find Attentive and where can people find you personally online? Definitely. Yeah. So um, for Attentive, you know, visit us at attendamobile.com. We have a lot of great resources and guides. You know, if you're just curious about SMS, um, you know, whether it's blogs, industry research, all that good stuff. If you're interested in learning about two-way conversational, um, you know, you can schedule a demo with us. Um, and we, we're happy to, to guide you through that. But myself, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there. Um, just LinkedIn slash Blake and Pearl. Um, and happy to connect with you there and chat more about SMS or just e-com in general. Sweet, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for all the great content. Awesome. Thanks, Chase. All right, cheers.